Welcome to this new course on segmentation. Uh, in this course, we will see the role of segmentation uh, in the marketing plan. And then we will uh, study a couple of uh, tools to perform uh, segmentation. And finally, uh, I will insist on the role of uh, these techniques uh, beyond the marketing plan. So segmentation is uh, the, answer, the answer to the, the following problem. Um, uh, a product or a service can't, uh, serve, uh, can't um, uh, satisfy uh, the entirety of a, of a population. Uh, the reason is that uh, people have different tastes and if you try to uh, satisfy uh, one part of the crowd, it will displease another part because they don't like the same things. Um, the other problem is that you can't have a product that would have all features you can imagine in order to service everyone. Uh, products very often uh, get their value from their simplicity and in any case in practical terms uh, you have to choose um, a limited set of uh, features for, for, your, for your product. Um, so you have to find a way to match um, a product that has some features uh, with a segment uh, of the crowd and this process uh, is actually um, uh, uh, called segmentation. Uh, more precisely, segmentation is uh, the first step of a three steps process. Segmentation followed by targeting, followed by positioning. Uh, the segmentation uh, in itself consists in um, uh, studying this big crowd of potential customers and dividing it into uh, subgroups uh, that are relatively homogeneous. Once you have these identified these groups, uh, targeting consists in selecting the most attractive of these groups in terms of uh, profitability for you, in terms of uh, feasibility of addressing them, uh, which means that you, uh, uh, you might have experience addressing these groups, or you might uh, uh, have um, uh, um, already products uh, uh, fitting their needs. Uh, so you select only the segments that uh, your um, activity allows you to, to address. And finally, uh, the positioning step consists in um, uh, uh, imagining your product or uh, crafting your product in such a way that it perfectly matches um, the expectations of the segments that you identified in the targeting phase. So as you see, the whole uh, precondition for, for this uh, uh, process is that you are able to differentiate the initial crowd of potential customers into sub-segments. How do you do that? Um, you need market data, you need to get information on this crowd uh, first, and the second step is to uh, uh, create associations between individuals of this, uh, uh, of this crowd. It means that you have to, um, you find a way uh, that uh, uh, describes individuals as being similar or not. You remove outliers um, because uh, uh, they are not uh, representative of uh, the basis of customers that you are going to address. Then finally you form the segments and then uh, you interpret what these segments uh, actually mean. So let's take an example to uh, clarify that. Uh, you are in the car industry, uh, you have the capacity to build cars, uh, but one car won't fit every uh, uh, customer. Uh, you need to know um, uh, what subgroups of customers would like um, what they would like and knowing that uh, you will be able to see whether you can do it and if so what kind of car you would build. So the first step is to divide all car drivers into sub-segments. So you get market data maybe from a consumer panel and then you develop measures of associations. Uh, it means that you look at which uh, characteristics of your drivers uh, match. 
Uh, so uh, if they have similar needs, that's something that could match. If they have similar um, uh, number of kids, uh, if they uh, previously owned the same kind of cars, well, that's a measure of association. So that's what these steps consist in. You look at um, ingredients for similarity. You remove outliers, so if you spot a, car, a race car driver, you know it's never going to be uh, your uh, uh, representative of, of the population, so you, you leave that out. And then you form segments based on the association criteria that you decided on, and you use tools that we're going to see uh, that will uh, do the job for you. They will basically identify groups of individuals that form strong associations. These are your segments. And finally, you look at these groups that the tool found for you, and you uh, describe these uh, segments, looking at actually what, uh, what do these people have in common in this segment. Um, this is uh, an example of an ideal example of a segmentation, a segmentation that would have worked perfectly. Um, so on this visual illustration, you see uh, uh, cycle, cycles or blobs. Uh, these balls uh, represent car drivers, let's say, and um, uh, connections or links, you know, the traits that you see between uh, cycles uh, represent uh, associations. So two uh, cycles that are connected, that would mean that they look alike a lot in terms of their needs or their tastes or in terms of any data that you have on them. And presented this way, we see that our um, segmentation tool worked perfectly. Uh, we see that the, what, at the beginning we had a crowd, and uh, when we take into account associations between drivers, and when we use a tool to uh, spot uh, groups of strongly associated drivers, well, we do find groups. Um, and they are neatly differentiated, right? They don't overlap too much. Um, and again, in this ideal scenario, let's imagine that looking at who is in these groups, uh, we find uh, neatly uh, differentiated groups. So families with young chi children, or professionals who need pickups, or single men with both states. So this uh, exercise would uh, um, give a lot to think <laughs> to uh, your uh, uh, production department. Uh, and to yourself in terms of what kind of uh, uh, product offer could you, could you create to match um, all of these groups or more likely uh, one or a few of these groups depending on your capabilities, depending on the profitability of these segments, uh, etc. So how do, you, how do you go from, you know, um, this uh, a crowd on which you have some information to these uh, nicely uh, cut uh, groups, segments. The first approach is, uh, that I like to mention, even if we are going to focus on the quantitative approach, the first approach is always the qualitative approach. You should never neglect uh, the expertise of uh, uh, experts uh, in the industry, the extensive knowledge that um, uh, people working in the industry have developed uh, because they have encountered so many situations, they have faced the customers uh, so many times that they have uh, uh, good insights as to uh, what the demand is uh, on this market. Um, that's not because we are going to drill down on the quantitative side and that it replaces the qualitative approach. The two should be matched. On the side of quantitative approaches, you will see often discussed two kinds of, uh, um, of uh, categories. Uh, supervised or non-supervised approaches. Supervised just means that you give some hints to the tool, uh, such as, I would like four segments to be found. So you don't say which segments and which one they're going to be, but this is still a bit supervised because you instruct 
the tool that you want four clusters, no more, no less, in the results. As compared to the non-supervised approach where you just throw the data to the algorithm and the algorithm returns whatever it finds uh, without any further instruction from you. You might also hear about the distinction between hierarchical and partitioning approaches and we'll see the difference in the coming slides. So, uh, how would segmentation work with a hierarchical clustering approach? So it's a bit intimidating, complex graph, uh, a new term, but look, let's have a look, you'll see it's quite simple. You start at step one with all your car drivers, and here I just use the color coding to show that um, some of them uh, look alike in terms of, uh, you know, uh, demographics or taste or whatever, and, and some are different. Uh, so the first step is to, it's an iterative process. You, you just do something and again and again and again up, up to the end. So the first step is to aggregate together, to group, if you mean, um, if you want, to group uh, individuals that share the strongest similarities. So here, uh, purple drivers together, uh, green drivers together, etc. But if you do that, you can't stop there because you will end up with uh, zillions of uh, tiny, tiny groups. Uh, and that's not segmentation. Segmentation, right? You mean a, a family of uh, five to ten huge groups, maybe, or three or four, but not 10,000 groups of three customers each, right? So that's why you continue on the second step. And in the second step, you look at which group could be grouped together. So you just measure the similarity between each groups and you group the ones that have the strongest similarity between them. So in this case, you would see that, I mean, that's just for illustration, but let's imagine that uh, dark blue uh, and blue uh, and purple and light blue groups are quite similar between themselves, so you would group them into a, a, a bluish group. Um, and this group, in turn, would be, could be grouped with a, a group which is different, but not, not that too different. It's the uh, group with uh, green uh, drivers. And when you iterate, you know, grouping small groups into bigger groups, and these bigger groups into even bigger groups, you will end up at the end with uh, yeah, five to ten, it depends, but with a couple of uh, mega huge uh, groups. These are your segments. So I hope you understand your approach. Uh, it's all about uh, starting from the bottom, aggregating and then aggreg aggregating more until you have uh, uh, the number of groups that you are satisfied with. The issue with this technique is that it does not scale up well, by which, uh, so that's a very important uh, uh, notion here, scaling up means the ability to be applied to large data sets. And in terms of the computations that the hierarchical clustering needs, uh, it, it needs a lot of computations. So it works well when you have 50, uh, 1000, um, a population of 1,000 individuals, but if you have zillions or I mean, uh, millions or billions of individuals, uh, it's going to take days before it returns a, a result, days or months, so it's not practical. That's why you have a, a preferred alternatives, such as the partitioning uh, approach. Here with K means clustering. So it's uh, maybe the most popular clustering technique, and I explain how it works. You start with a population of car drivers, you have information about them, and you plot them um, according to their, uh, to their characteristics. So here, just for visual illustration, I, I use a graph with two dimensions, uh, X and Y, uh, but mathematically, uh, the tool can, uh, can work with any number of axes, right? So um, in practice, if you have 10 information for each driver, that could, take, uh, that could be taken into account. Uh, but 
just look at two, uh, two features. So you plot your drivers according to their revenue and whether they're ecologically conscious or not. And then it's a supervised approach to instruct uh, the algorithm, the k-means algorithm. Uh, you instruct how many clusters you would like to find. So let's say you ask for three clusters. What the algorithm does very simply is to uh, place the center of these three clusters, so that's the little cross that you see, it places the, the, the center of the clusters so that the distance is minimum between the members of the cluster and the center. So you see here that uh, uh, being positioned where they are, uh, these three clusters uh, minimize the distance between the members of the clusters and the center of the clusters. Uh, you could ask for just two clusters and you see that the, the solution found, so that's in the top right corner, the solution found is a bit different. And the algorithm computed that creating a cluster that gathers all nodes on the top of the chart uh, is the solution that makes it a minimal distance between members of, the, of each cluster and their centers. Um, that's it for k-means clustering. Another approach, uh, which is unsupervised, so I, I personally like it very much because you, uh, you leave the algorithm to show you how many meaningful clusters it finds without your uh, judgment, uh, is community detection in networks. Looks intimidating, but look at how simple it, it is. You will start again with a list of car drivers and the information you have about them, age, uh, gender, uh, taste in cars, number of kids, budget, etc. And you simply create a network where two car drivers will be connected if they share a lot of these characteristics. So that's the picture in the middle of the slide, that's the kind of things you could see. And then uh, you use an algorithm uh, uh, which will simply find groups of car drivers that are very much connected one with each other. So they have a lot of links. Uh, and then you can, it just returns this information. Uh, these 10 car drivers belong to the same uh, community or segment because they have a lot of uh, links between each other and relatively few links with the rest of the network. I call that a segment. And then it's up to you to actually look at these communities and see whether they make sense. So that's basically it for uh, the techniques for segmentation. Before leaving, I really want to insist on something uh, hugely important. Segmentation is not just for uh, something you use when you launch a new product or when you start a new activity looking at uh, the market. <coughs> segmentation is also very useful in routine activities when you need to uh, basically uh, get a view of a large data set uh, and see how it's organized, what is the structure of this data set. So if you want to send an email campaign and maybe you can't send a different email to each of your different customer, but still you think it would be nice to target each email in, into five different big groups of customers. So the, how will you make these groups? Uh, well, that's where segmentation intervenes. Take your customers, look at their info, see how they are associated with each other, and find segments. Then you can send a differentiated email to each of these segments. Um, and many, o many other uh, practical uh, situations where segmentation is uh, uh, very, very uh, useful. So that's basically it. Uh, thank you for following and um, that's it.